There's great power in prayer. One afternoon, the parish priest decided to go into the church to see who has come to pray. Just then, the back door of the church opened. An elderly man walked down the aisle. He was shabbily dressed. He had dirty clothes on, but he walked right down the aisle, walked right up to the altar, knelt before the altar, bowed his head for a moment, and he walked away. The parish priest noticed this man, this elderly man, coming every afternoon, and he would walk down the aisle, put his head down in prayer, and walk away. And he was carrying a tiffin box, and the parish priest grew a little suspicious because of the robbery that was happening. So he stopped this elderly man and said, My friend, I see you coming here every afternoon. What are you doing? The elderly man looked at the priest and said, I work in the factory down the road. My lunchtime is my prayer time. And during my lunchtime, I walk into this church. I walk down the aisle, walk right up to the altar. I bow my head, and this is what I pray. I just came to tell you, Lord, how happy I have been. Since we found each other's friendship, and you took away my sins. I don't know much of how to pray, but I think of you every day. So Jesus, this is Jim checking in today. The priest was so embarrassed. He was taken aback by this old Jim's prayer, and he said to old Jim, old Jim, you can come to this church any time you want to pray. And after old Jim left, the parish priest went down on his knees before the altar. With tears in his eyes, he repeated old Jim's prayer. I just came to tell you, Lord, how happy I have been. I don't know much of how to pray. But I think of you every day. So Jesus, this is me checking in today. It's been a while since old Jim came to the church to pray. The parish priest grew fond of him and he was worried what happened to old Jim. So he decided to walk down the road to the factory where old Jim was working. And he went to the factory and he asked the members, what happened to old Jim? They said to him, old Jim is very ill. He hasn't been coming to work for about a week. He's in the hospital. So the parish priest decided to go to the hospital and to pay a visit to old Jim. When he went to the hospital, the nurses came to the parish priest and said, Father, there's something special about old Jim. He's always with a smile. He's been here only for about a week, but he has transformed this entire place. We are very curious to know, how does old Jim do it? No one comes to visit him. No one sends him flowers. No one sends him a card. And yet he seems to be so cheerful. Can you do us a favor? Can you find out what is it that makes old Jim so happy? The parish priest walked into old Jim's room, sat beside him and said, Jim, is it true? That no one comes to visit you. No one sends you flowers. No one sends you a card, and yet you seem to be so happy. What is the secret? The old Jim smiled and said to the parish priest, The nurses are wrong. The nurses are wrong. Every afternoon, my friend walks into my room, sits beside me, holds my hand, leans over me, and he says to me, I just came to tell you, Jim, how happy I have been. Since I found this friendship, and I took away your sins, 
I always love to hear you pray. I just came to tell you, Jim, this is Jesus checking in today. This is Jesus checking in today. And that's what happens, my dear friends. Every time you pray, every time you come together, the Lord checks in. You enter into the very presence of God. And that's why the Lord says, wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. You enter into the very presence of God. And the Lord checks in every time you whisper a prayer to Jesus. He's there. He's there right beside you. He's there listening to your cries. This evening as I reflect with you on the importance of prayer and family life. On family as the school of prayer. I'd like to put before you a few important questions for reflection. When was the last time you spent time in prayer? When was the last time you came together as husband and wife to pray? When was the last time you sat together as a family, as parents and children to pray? I know in so many homes, there's no time for family prayer. Family prayers are being substituted by so-called entertainment programs and technology and internet and, and whatnot. No wonder there's so much of problems in our homes and families. No wonder there's so many broken homes and broken marriages and broken families. In a survey that was conducted in America some years ago, which has a shocking rate of divorce, which is one out of three, ends in a divorce. In a survey that was conducted, this is what the findings of that survey was. There was only one divorce out of 500 Christian marriages that was rooted in daily prayer and the reading of the Word of God. There was only one divorce out of 500 marriages that had daily prayer and reading of the Word of God. This statistics, my dear friends, tells us two important things. First of all, that divorce is common in non-religious prayer, in non-religious families and prayer. The family that is schooled in prayer is the best insurance that you can have against divorce, broken homes, and broken marriages. And I repeat again, the family that is schooled in prayer is the best insurance that you can ever have against divorce, broken homes, and broken families. The family that is schooled in prayer will always be together. And that's why Father Patrick Payton beautifully coined the phrase, the family that prays together stays together. Every time you come together to pray, the Lord does something wonderful and amazing in your homes and in your families. He keeps your families together. And so, before I describe to you what prayer can do for us, let's first of all reflect on some of the misconceptions of prayer we most often have. For some, prayer is some kind of a ritual or kind of a mantra that you want to rattle out. We don't pray because God is in need of prayer or makes God feel good. We pray because we are in need of prayer and makes us feel good. Prayer does not change God, but changes us and draws us closer to God. Prayer is a lifeline. 
It's the fuel of our soul. It's a loving relationship that you have with God. And when you are in a loving relationship with someone, you long to have a conversation with that person. And that's why the psalmist says, like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul yearns for you, my God. Like, a, like the deer that pants, that thirsts, for running waters, so my soul yearns and thirsts and pants for God. Our soul should long for God, should pant for God. Prayer is not just we talking to God, but also God talking to us and we listening to God. Sometimes when we come to pray, we just come, look at Jesus, we rattle out uh, a, a lot of our prayers, and, and, and then we look at Jesus, all right, Lord, it's time up, I need to go. And the Lord is saying, hey, wait a minute, I want to talk to you. It's not just we talking to God, but also God talking to us, and we listening to God. And that's what young Samuel experienced in when God called him. Samuel, Samuel. He called him thrice. And Prophet Eli says, the next time you hear him say that, calling out a name, you say to him, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So every time you come into the presence of God, just don't rattle out some prayers, but just sit before the presence of God and, and say to God, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And God speaks to you in the silence of your heart. Silence is the language of God. He speaks to you through the, pray, through the pages of the Bible, through the scripture. Every page in the Bible is God's love letter for you. He speaks to you through one another, through different events and circumstances. As long as you are tuned in to God, only then can you hear the voice of God. Sometimes we're so drowned in the midst of the cacophony of the many noises that we hear around us. But seldom do we allow ourselves to be tuned in to God's channel, to God who is always speaking to us. So next time when you come to pray, sit before the presence of God and say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening god speaks to you in the silence of your heart alfred lord tennyson a great english poet had this to say about prayer he says great things are wrought by prayer than this world could ever dream of great things are wrought by prayer than this world could ever imagine whenever you come to pray Great things happen. You can move mountains. And that's what we heard in today's gospel passage. Ask and you will receive. Not you may, you might. Jesus is very definite. When you ask, you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door shall be open for you. It's for you to claim these promises. You need to come with deep faith. Have deep faith every time you come into the presence of God. Claim those promises. I remember the Lord saying in the gospel, if you have deep faith, you can move mountains, right? So there was this elderly lady. She opened the scripture and there was this text. If you pray with deep faith, you can move mountains. She was living in a village and outside her hut, was this mountain. All right, let me try this out. She opened the window. She looked at the, at the mountain late in the evening and she said, hey mountain, with deep faith, I want you to be out of that place because you're blocking sunlight into my hut. And she shut the window, went to sleep. The next morning when she woke up, she opened the window what did she see? What do you think she saw? The mountain? Was it there or was it not there? It was there. 
All you people, no faith. <laughs> Well, she did see the mountain. She opened the window and she saw the mountain. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> if you are going to be praying for something and believing in your heart, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You got to claim those promises. You got to believe, Lord, you got to take this cancer away from me. You got to take this heart disease away from me. You got to take away this diabetes or whatever. You got to take away this mountain. What is that mountain in your life, your homes and families? You got to claim. But you say in your heart already, oh, it's, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And that's why you got to have deep faith. If you have deep faith, you can move mountains. Along with deep faith, the Lord is saying to you, be persistent in your prayer. Pray without ceasing. Just don't pray for a moment and say, all right, I made a prayer. Let's see what happens. Keep praying about it until the Lord gives in to you. And that's why the Lord gives a parable about this widow who goes to this wicked judge and keeps asking him to take up her case. And finally, the wicked judge just gives in because she was not giving up. She was persistent in her request. And the Lord says, and if a wicked judge can give in to the demand of this widow, how much more will a good God do for you when you are persistent in your prayer? Pray without ceasing. Don't give up. Be persistent with deep faith. Deep faith should be coupled with persistent prayer. And you can experience amazing things in your life. I know some people come and tell me, Father, I keep praying and praying, but nothing seems to happen. I want you to know that God's delays are not God's denials. God's delays are not God's denials. When God is delaying to answer your prayers, He's not denying your prayers, but He's just waiting to give you the right thing at the right time. It's for you to be open with deep faith, to experience the abundant blessings of God the Father. Most important of all, be humble before the Lord when you come to pray. The Lord already knows what your needs are. So don't heap up too many words. Just come into the presence of God and say, Lord, you already know what I need. I just come before you with deep faith and trust. Be humble. And lastly, be forgiving. Unforgiveness is the greatest barrier in why prayers are not being answered. Every time your prayers are reaching up to God, but it's sort of shut down because of unforgiveness. This lid of unforgiveness just blocks your prayers from going up to God. And that's why Jesus says, if you have anything against your brother, leave your offerings there and then first go and reconcile with your brother or your sister and then bring your offerings to the Lord. So if you have any hatred and anger in your heart, I told you to go home yesterday and to reconcile. Just surrender the people who have hurt you. Forgive and you will experience tremendous peace and joy and your prayers will become even more powerful. Have deep faith, be persistent, humble, and forgiving. Make your family prayer time creative. All right? I know parents have a huge trouble getting their children to pray along with them. Hold hands. Every day change the format of your prayer. Get each one of them to do something during the family prayer time. Give them a role. Let them feel involved in this prayer. Ask them to make a spontaneous prayer. And you will be amazed how beautiful these little ones make prayer to Jesus. You will be amazed at the wisdom and the simplicity of these little ones as they turn to God and make a sweet prayer. Make your prayer times exciting and beautiful moments of encounter with God. To give you a simple tip of how you can make your prayer creative and effective, many people come and ask me, Father, when I'm praying, I get so easily distracted. Um, I'm, I'm finding it hard to concentrate. You can use, that, use this, this acronym called ACTS, not just for your personal prayer, but you could do that as a family prayer as well. A-C-T-S, ACTS, it's an acronym. 
A in Acts stands for adoration. When you begin to pray, first begin by adoring God. Spend a few moments in silence just adoring God. Acknowledge who God is, how awesome this God is. It is this God who created you, who fashioned you, who has everything in control. Just be in awe of this awesome God. Spend the first few moments adoring God. C in Acts stands for contrition. Spend the next few moments asking for forgiveness. It's a beautiful moment. If you're having your family prayer at the end of the day, it's also a time for examination of conscience. Look into your heart and, and ask yourself, have I been good to my spouse? Have I been good to my children? Have I hurt anyone in any way? It's not, a it's not just a time to ask forgiveness from God, but also to reconcile with one another, to turn to one another and say, I'm sorry if I've hurt you through my words or through my deeds. It's a time for seeking for God's mercy and forgiveness. First, begin by adoring God. Second, see contrition. T in Acts stands for thanksgiving. Spend the next few moments just thanking God for His goodness for his generosity. Be grateful for the many blessings that God has showered upon you. For the fact that you are here this evening to listen to me. For the fact that you can listen. For the fact that you can breathe. For the fact that you can move. For the fact that you can see these are God's gracious gifts. Every day is God's gift and we take them for granted. An attitude of our gratitude is the greatest act of love for God. Spend the next few moments just thanking God. Sometimes your prayer time can be just thanksgiving because if you, you, you can spend an entire lifetime just thanking God because there's so much to thank God for. And end your prayer time with supplication. S in Acts stands for supplication. This is the time when you bring in your petitions, your prayers. You not only pray for yourself but also pray for the needs of others. Bring in your prayers, your intentions, pray for your family, your loved ones, and for those who have asked you to pray for. Supplication. So let's go over that. A in Acts stands for? Fantastic. C in Acts stands for? T in Acts stands for? And S in Acts stands for? And every time you remember Acts, just say a little prayer for me as well. <laughs> Prayer is the greatest insurance against a broken home, a broken family, and a broken marriage. A family that prays together stays together. And every time you come together as husband and wife, as parents and children, the Lord comes into your midst. He just checks in. And if the Lord is with you, there's nothing to be afraid. For with the Lord, you can do all things. Amen? Amen? Don't doubt for a moment about the mountains. You can move them. Amen.